has kicked off a semicolon, and he has pitched something that is quite compelling, and which I think the ambassador has spoke to very emotionally and passionately. How do we bring it all together? Um, by my experience, uh, I work uh, with NTN as uh, Chief Transformation Officer. Uh, I'm also an academic researcher, I'm a PhD. I'm also involved with the innovation tech ecosystem, driving data science and journey. So I live in the three lives of technology, innovation, and education. And continuously I begin to see how they are so disparate and so difficult to bring it all together. Any country where we have seen high impact translation of innovation to economic development is because they were able to bring it together. Each time you look at Silicon Valley, Stanford University, Bay Area, and some of the fantastic stories that Sam spoke about, is that seamless integration of various entities that create value in the society. And that, for me, is a conversation that I want to have with us this morning, which is about you know, linking, bringing it all together, because that is the only way we can maximize the opportunity of leveraging innovation for sustainable economic development. So, um, so the first thing to note in terms of innovation is to come to a general understanding that the future is here. The question is, do we have the capacity, the skill set, to translate the opportunity that the future presents in solving our immediate problem? So in doing this, I'm going to take us some step forward into the future, taking us you know, to uh, uh, 2030. Let's visualize 2030. And begin to ask a fundamental question, how ready are we as a people uh, to see this future come to pass? So let me just quickly run you through a very simple story. It's every 3rd, 2030, 10, 21 year, somewhere in Ocean the Lagos. I'm going to be using uh, names of everyday places in the city, which captures the opportunities and the presentation of this country, especially in Nigeria. Ocean D is a popular location in Lagos that is known for so many negative stops, but it has a, in 2030, it has a very high-tech supermarket because the ID has a unique identifier, or by my finger, uh, by my by my by the fingerprint, because I shook the robot. The robot can check that against a database of 40 million other people and can call me by name. Not just calling me by name, recognizing the last world I visited, and in doing that, it tells me, oh, I have some special offers for you. You don't have to walk through the aisle to pick what you normally pick. So let's go to the best offers that are packed for you today, such that I can shorten your shopping time. And it tells you, do you know that it's only four days your son's birthday? You have actually forgotten. It tells you the weather in the area where you live had fluctuated from 32 to 27. So you need certain medications, you need certain you know, cosmetics and all that. Or the fact that your car insurance, you knew why it's due in nine days, you've forgotten all that. And they say, because of all the peculiarities about you, that I know better than you do, I have brought together for you the best proposition that is still made for you. And says, oh, please go to table 20 and the special offer is there for you. And I go to table 20, I'm still wondering all these things that this robot has brought together and what is called robotic selling. I'm sure you've never had that before. Robotic selling is the next thing that we're going to see. He said, don't bother about how you're going to pay for this. Um, your, a, a fintech has just approved a loan, uncollateralized loan. Um, you don't need to an overdraft. You don't need to go and bring uh, father's uh, death certificate or mother's land. It's, a, it's approved on the spot. So which means the traditional going to a bank to apply for a loan or all that has changed. At the point of purchase, using what we call open banking API solution, what we call open banking, offers are available to customer on real-time basis. Now with this so much that the robotic selling has given to me, how do I pack them and take them home? He said, don't bother about yourself. I know you came here today with a sedan. So I will pack the perishables, and this guy will move it to your trunk. So don't bother yourself. As we get there, we can open it ourselves. So we don't even need guys that run around. All the boys you see everywhere saying, can we help you? We don't need that. Or it says, oh, the other ones, we're going to deliver it through two options. Option one, DHL robotic drone can actually deliver it in front of your house. Or perhaps we use a FedEx uh, robot delivery, you know, and you have it. The future is closer than we think. But the question, do we have what it takes about 
to create the possibilities of this future or to be able to you know, annex and access the possibility that this brings. Some things are already happening and they are not far away. This is Rwanda, where Zipma uses AI-driven drone that uses precision to deliver drugs in rural areas. And the problem still remains, the problem of infrastructure, there are no roads. So what I'm talking about is if you understand innovation as a way of leapfrogging and addressing our infrastructural shortages using the power of technology, the passion with which we adopt technology will change. There are certain things we cannot fix, but technology, innovation, is giving us smarter, alternative routes to getting things done better. The beautiful thing about this is as soon as the drone drops there, maybe it's an antibiotic, and those antibiotics cannot be saved in rural areas because they've got in no refrigerators. So as soon as those drugs are made available on demand, pharmacy on demand, and they are used, the drone can also take the drug back to the areas that have got refrigerators. So the traditional problem of wastages, challenges, are solved using precision-driven technology. Or perhaps we look at our agriculture where as much as 60% of our GDP comes directly from it. But yet there is no optimal productivity. We are aware of the level of wastages in agriculture. And most of those wastages are in the middle layer. Even some wastages are in so-called application of technology. We overuse fertilizer, we overuse pesticide, and of course it has consequences on our health. Now, with the power of precision farming, a drone can fly over a farm and it, the drone can identify at, at leaf level, at plant level, which of this plant has got a problem based on what we call vegetative index. Maybe it has a spot that is different from others, it has colors, or the growth is different from others. So when it wants to apply fertilizer or pesticide, it's at that level of precision. So it means as much as 80% of expense on fertilizer is saved. Why? Because innovation and technology has been applied, and the output or outcome is improved. And because we can use this, this can also indicate harvest day per different crop type. And it can, of course, inform your logistic system or independent logistic pickups to come to the farm to pick it when it should be picked. So technology, essentially, is the ultimate game changer that can cumulatively add value when you come to GDP, which is a quantum measure of the volume of goods and services produced in the nation at a particular time. When we leverage it, even at this fundamental basic level, we have so much uh, level of impact. Okay, so I'll leave it that. So I'll move forward. The other thing, having said that big picture, which looks, can this ever happen in Nigeria? This is far-fetched and all that. But we're also seeing some emerging trends that is assuring us that local is getting digital faster. Even though they're illiterate, even though they live in villages, there's a sense of aspiration to live a better life. I work with the telecom that serves 65 million Nigerians on a daily basis on a per second service. And we are wowed by the kind of adoption that we see even in areas where education is low, yet people are using data to meet their everyday needs. Use data to ask questions about their health. You know, some would download an app for for religious content, Bible, Quran, and it will lead it to that. And these are people who have not gone to school. So possibilities are possible if we engineer it through an integrated learning system that brings together all the entities that support inclusive learning. So let me just boil with some images. These are everyday images to justify that even at the so-called bottom of the pyramid, opportunity exists. Maybe we have not just seen it, or perhaps we've not configured the right, right technology to offer the right uh, outcome required. Now, these are local cues in indicating strong digital aspiration. This means a lot for people who quantify value. Now, you will see this person as a roadside seller, but this person is carrying something. Smartphone. This person knows so many things you may not think he knows. Now, this is a school somewhere in, not, it's even middle income family location in Lagos. Uh, Facebook nursery and primary school. You might say it's funny, but you know, we made the effort to engage the person. It's everybody, when the school was named, it was 2009, when everybody was talking Facebook, Facebook. And the owner asked question, what is Facebook? They said, Facebook is the future. So if I want to create a school, let me name it after Facebook. Whether there's intellectual property right or not, it was a 
But if this is what is happening elsewhere in the world, why can I can I find a local parallel? Especially because there's a book inside it, Facebook, and I'm a school, so I can put that. And then perhaps the logo of Blackberry. Or perhaps interesting images like this, that even though I may not get there, but I desire to be there. This is a organizer that named this company Facebook Login. Just call me Login. It's a lot. They are very aspirational images that capture a strong desire that I understand the possibility of digital, even though it's not yet been appropriated or customized for my reality, I can identify with this possibility. I can align or perhaps aspire that when a version of the miniaturized version of it is available, I can access it when it comes. Because I see that everywhere I go, there's a satellite dish. And because I don't have one yet, I can create my version until the right one comes. So we will give him or her a miniaturized version that will solve the problem. Or perhaps these more practical, inspiring images where things that we think are exclusive to certain kinds of people are being seen in locations that are out of this world. You have to say how, and that's the power of it. And that's what we need to think. You can only align with the kind of vision that Sam has, with semicolon, if you can begin to see beyond the obvious. And that's what I want to achieve this morning. There's so much out there beyond what we all see in our suit, you know, in our lucky Victoria Island access. There's so much opportunities and possibilities. We just need to create the right combined new platform that brings it all together before we start unleashing limitless possibilities that are bound around us. The third point, okay, this is another interesting one. I'm sure you are familiar with people like this, every day in Lagos. Can you see something there in red? Somebody even said some of the sellers on the street, you know, a lot of things are possible. So if somebody is now counting market size or addressable market for POS usage, and you're using number of shops, there's so many, there so many mobile shops in Lagos. You know, before you know it, some of the vendors on the street were asked, I've got a POS, you can transfer. Most it's charity, you know, and it can be taxed, you know, and all that. And to underscore the fact that there are uplift dimension of that, I'm going to use a classical case study of a flop in Nigeria, a call pay later. Pay later is uncollateralized, on demand loan, where you get loan on the go, without anyone asking to see you physically, uh, getting documents about you, Purely because you have an app on your phone that tracks where you go, what you do, and all that, you get a look. Now, this particular day, 8th of July, 2017, there was a major rain in certain parts of Lagos. Very serious rain. And a lot of people were affected. So people needed cash to be able to do basic things, to solve, to settle themselves on that day. Because there are no cash I need to fix. Maybe uh, a part of my house was blown up. I need to get a, you know, somebody to come do something. You know, and handy man to come do something for me immediately. But, you know, and because it was also 7th or uh, 8th of July, you know, it was second week of salary collection. And for those who understand salary cycle, people tend to move from hero to zero uh, by second week. You understand what I mean? Either there's a loan to be paid to some banks, or there are some big commitments that as soon as it's first of uh, the month, they pull everything out. So this bank, on that same day, that same Saturday, by 3 p.m. on Saturday, they launched a campaign on social media asking Nigeria, do you need funds for emergency with the image of what people just saw that morning? In traditional business model, somebody will have to get to work on Monday, write a report that, oh, there was uh, a flood on Saturday. Do we need to consider putting together emergency credit system? From maybe by Friday to get to the booth of the second person the week after, the risk committee will meet about it. By the third or fourth or fifth or sixth week, it may be approved. By then, the need is no more you know, evident. Now, what has this guy done? They use the power of what people are talking about on social media. What are the common words people are using? Flawed. What are the accompanying words that follow those words? Cash, money, ATM, POS. So they were able to seamlessly integrate common terminologies that may not mean anything to anybody. To begin to develop a risk algorithm to design a real-time proposition that is available when the customer wants it, not when the provider is ready to give it. And that's the power of innovation, where it's all about the customer, 
not the Baobias of the Spirit. But this kind of mindset are not things that are learned in traditional walls of schools. It takes a new approach to thinking. It takes what these young guys will do for us just now, design thinking. When you empathize with the people, where is the shoe pinching them? Where is the problem? This guy needs money now, not tomorrow. So how do I design a technology solution from the mindset, from the youth, youth no, need state, need state of the customer, and then build it to solution. Not the traditional build the solution, and everybody will be fed into it. Okay? And I'll conclude here, I have so many slides, but I think because of time, I will uh, to uh, underscore the fact that we are sitting on massive opportunity as a country. And those opportunity can be categorized largely on two figures. But on top of that is the possibility of mobile. The opportunity that mobile has opened for us. But population is a huge advantage. By 2050, we're going to be the third largest country in the world. That is huge. What would that mean to us? Are we going to become the job capital of the world? By 2050, the average young youth age in Nigeria, the average age in Nigeria is going to be 21. In other parts of the world, it's going to be between 49 and 52. So they will all be looking for young people. Can we become the work capital of the world, building up capacity for the next 30, 40 years? That is the opportunity. Second is the fact that even though these young people are challenged, they are threatened, yet they still have very high optimism. There's a research that is done every year by, uh, by Google called Google Barometer. They ask a lot of questions. One of the questions is, how do you think technology will enhance the quality of life of people? It's called digital optimism. As our two last researches that were done, 2017, 2018, Nigeria is number one, which means more young Nigeria believe strongly that technology is a game changer that can elevate them out of their situation to next level. That's that. Then, of course, when we go about mobile first access, Nigeria is the number one country in terms of how many people access the internet via mobile device. We are number one in the world, so which means solutions now need to be configured as a mobile delivery entity. And I, I cannot be a mobile doctor, mobile library, mobile entity. Why? Because more than 90% of internet traffic in Nigeria is coming from mobile devices. So what does that mean to us? And we have seen possibilities. We look at the contribution of mobile currently to our national GDP is now going above 10%. So, possibility of integrated innovation. If I look at what our friends at Africa Nordi is doing, when you enjoy moving on the go, it shows the possibility that when we tie it together, bring technology, innovation, and education, we're going to open new vistas of possibilities that will change our narrative as a people. And then you will break it by population. So, if you are 200 million, there are 100 million people that are below 18, and these are amazing statistics are profiled. They're very optimistic, there's increasing urbanization. They have access to the internet, and more importantly, the, what we call peer-to-peer -peer content sharing. If I see something, I am validated in my community by how quickly I share it. To the extent that people are in a race to be the first to post it on social media. Don't mind all the bad things they post, they still post some good things. The first to put it on status, the first to get it on Instagram. And whether you like it, you know, not like that fusion in an unstructured manner is becoming even more exciting. That even though more can travel so fast, how much more can we debate those established relational learning pathway, begin to deepen access to what matters to people? And then you will go to those who are above, nine, above 18, that's another 50%, and look at the level of financial inclusion. Only 40% are banked, 60% are not banked. And out of the 60% are not banked, we still have about 23 million of them who are some informal banks, which means we still have about 37 million Nigerians that have no access to any financial services of any form. So the possibilities are limited. I'm trying to put science and numbers to some of the content that are painted. That the future is so close, it's now for us to create the right learning, right education, that can allow us to bring it all together and start creating what works for us, what makes sense for us. So it is time we retire the time digital economy. Why? There's only one economy which is digitizing at very speed, and that's the future. There is no more thin line. Everything, everywhere, every hour, anything you can think of will be digitized. And it's not for us to begin to ask, do we have the tech? Do we have the capacity? Or else we're going to go through another second slavery where we need to start importing talents to help us with that path. 
I don't think it's exciting for any one of us here to go through that journey. At least the little we have read showed that was not a good way to live. So Jesus' name is about to happen. What are we going to do different? We're going to tie it. And I think that is the passion uh, that uh, my friend Sam uh, is trying to drive the semicolon, uh, the semicolon. So, we just got to follow Charles Darwin. We just got to adapt change very speedily. We can't continue to be this way. We need a new way of learning. So, future of work, you know, just I'm sure you're all familiar with these statistics. We've also done a lot of work around this. So I won't bore you along with that. But the fundamental is the demographic, the power of machines and globalization is going to change dynamics of work. And we're going to need a lot of talents from our part of the world to add to global productivity. Why? Because the world has become a global village. So I can be in Lagos and be doing jobs for companies in San Francisco. I have a lot of young boys I mentor in data science Nigeria who finish university with first class maths and they, you will see their CVs in your popular recruitment. They won't. Why do they have to go to that structured organization and all those politics where the boy makes what you give him in one year in two weeks? The dynamics of value creation has changed and we need to be aware of the value that is accessible in that platform begin to say, how do we reconfigure for that? Of course, when you look at all the new ways of learning, intrapreneur, sidepreneur, staff sharing, intra, gig economy, there's a new things emerging. Or trends that what we call acquire, acquire, as in acquire a company because I want to hire best talents. And those are things that will happen in the future where I need certain developers, I can't get them, I have to go and buy a company. So these are emerging opportunities, or the fact that there's now mobilization of human resources, where you can get talent on demand, talent on the go, specialized skill set, situation-driven use cases, and all that. The possibility of shared economy, which is now the fastest growing business entity in the world, with the success of Airbnb and Uber, is a validation that capacity can be outsourced on a dynamic basis. So onshoring, offshoring can open new vistas of opportunity, if only we tie it together. And I always like this very funny joke, that if we're able to do it so well, able to raise a new breed of capacity, we're going to get guys who go for an HR interview. And when they talk in interview, what we are looking for is somebody about 25 years old that has got 40 years experience. Why? The guy has worked on multiple projects at multiple times without leaving the walls of his room. So he has lived 40 years, yet it's just five years. That is the future reality. People will travel in times. Knowledge will cause people to project beyond where they are. It's the question you have the platform, the system, the skill set enabler to make that happen. And that for me is a body that I want to leave for us as a quality. So skill for the next level. Now, this was a reset that we did in the science and you asking question. The biggest problem we have today is that 90% of students are being trained in jobs that will radically be changed by automation. Where it's big problem. Because Graduates are, are coming out, but they are not relevant. So irrelevant graduates, irrelevant graduations, graduated into nothing. No, this is based on facts and statistics. So a lot of data were collected. So what we did was we put all job offers being published on LinkedIn or not social media for two years on a day-by-day -day basis. Of course, there are a lot of duplication. So we call the web and we structure those jobs and we index them against automation trigger measures. And so most of the important things we call great jobs today won't exist in eight years to come. So how do we start uh, doing some great work that we need to do? And that's why uh, 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 you know, the, the non-profit I drive, Data Science Nigeria, which is like a pipeline to semicolon. So what we do is trigger structural learning in school, open students up to possibilities so that they see reason to start going for semicolon possibility. You know, uh, this Data Science Nigeria, in uh, terms of AI, getting people to understand what artificial intelligence means and what it can do. Uh, uh, and we're trying to democratize knowledge, use uh, USBs, videos, send it to all parts of the country, uh, run AI plus clubs in universities, such that students are finding alternative learning beyond the COBOL, Fortran that they're teaching them. Or getting kids to learn, uh, getting them exposed early enough, uh, with, uh, especially with this, uh, what we call uh, inter-campus uh, machine learning. Uh, which offers them possibilities and all that. So uh, that's our hub where we empower young people to do research in AI uh, based on the understanding that traditional learning is not sufficient to help our future. And all of us must contribute to the
narrative. And I think that's what amazing work that um, our semicolon has brought to the table. It's now for us to rise and make this work and happen. And when technology comes to change our world, I have this funny joke in images. Uh, it's an interesting, funny joke. I think it says a lot. And when digital gets embedded into our life decisions and choices, it helps us in areas where we can help ourselves. It makes life much better. It enriches productivity. It saves us money when it matters, where it matters, especially when emotion counts. Digital wins because data beats emotion. So this is a story of a lady that goes to an ATM to withdraw money. And because the ATM has been made intelligent by some amazing students are raised by semicolon. So ATMs are no more passive machine. They can now read emotions as they can sense who has come. They can read. So even if one guy comes with gun by your neck and asking you to withdraw money, the ATM of the future can understand those contexts based on design thinking and say, when this guy's face is squeezed, don't release money. <laughs> Trigger a police action to come there. Those are design thinking based possibilities. So when you know, this lady walks to the ATM. The ATM looks at her again. I know you. And based on my database app, you always come to the ATM with another guy. And you've been coming for the, for the last 10 years. And your name has not changed on our database. So which means you are still answering the same story. So if, and each time you, you come, you come with this guy's card. Because I've known you. I recognize you. So I offer you this book service. But having seen that you have refused this guy's proposal based on certain parameters that are you, because I can also look at your social media data, your Instagram post, I'm not going to give you money because I work for the interests of customers. These are solution driven design thinking possibilities. That's only possible when technology, innovation, education that makes sense, that put people at the center, that is empathy driven, that is design driven, uh, makes happen. So thanks to Sam for the great vision. I'm very excited to be back from MTN, from Data Science Nigeria. Let's change the world. Thank you very much.